That is absolutely correct. I had a heart attack at my friend's house. I had a gut feeling something happened to him. I messaged my friend. I said, something's going on. I'm, I don't know what it is. I do have some kind of weird intuition and I, I was worried. So I've been trying to get a hold of Jordan Maxwell for a month. Okay, so about a month ago, um, I picked up Jordan Maxwell and Flagstaff and drove him to Los Angeles to help him in the process of moving. And we had an eight and a half hour conversation. I mean, he slept a large part of the time, but it was so fascinating learning all about his life and his intimate relationships and how he feels about everything. And I recorded all of it with his permission and it's on my Patreon site. But in the last couple of weeks, I just had this weird feeling because I hadn't heard from him and he had a heart attack. Did you have a heart attack after I dropped you off? Oh yeah, yeah I had a major heart attack. Jordan. <laughs> They sent me to the hospital in an ambulance. About a month ago, I was released, finally. A month ago. Well, now I dropped you off in, what was it? Like the, like the, um, the middle of October, October something. Yeah. And then you stayed with your friend, and then what happened? And then I had a heart attack, and they sent me to the hospital. And I was in the hospital up until about maybe three weeks ago. So you, so you had a heart attack at your friend's house. Oh, my God. Was she there? Yes, he was there. He called the ambulance. Oh, my God. How did you know you were having a heart attack? Did you have, like, pain in your wrist or arm or what? I could tell it was a heart attack because it was like an elephant sitting on my chest. Oh, my God. It was horrible. Oh, my God, Jordan. But I lived through it. God. So, so that was a month ago. And that's what I felt. I felt something wasn't right. And I messaged Brandy. I said, Brandy, and this is about a month ago. I said, something isn't right. I feel weird about Jordan. We need to get a hold of him. And then she tried to contact you and then she couldn't. And nobody and could contact The reason why is because I was in a hospital at the time. What hospital did you go to? Oh, the Northridge Hospital. In Northridge. Okay. What did they say? Did they do a surgery? Did they? What happened? Yeah, they opened up my heart through my arm. They set a splint up my arm. It went into my heart. They opened up my heart. So at least now I'm breathing and I've got a heart again. Did they do put it? What did they put in it? Did they put a. Um... I don't know what they did. All I know they just put a little small, tiny. Uh, two in my arm and my wrist and sent it back through my arm into my heart and opened up the heart. Wow. All I know is that's what they did and that's why I'm better. I'm now sitting up and I'm doing better. Okay. Do you feel the same or do you feel different? No, I don't feel, I don't feel bad at all. I just feel old and sick and tired of living. I understand. I understand. Yes, I understand. I get that. So when did you get back to your home? Was it, uh, or where you are now? Are you in the same place I dropped you off? Yeah, that is correct. Yes, I'm in the same place you dropped me off. Yeah. Okay. And, and you are there. Are you getting taken care of? Or are they being kind? Are you they're doing all they can do for me. Okay. All they can do is do what they're doing. And that's what they're doing. Okay. okay. Well, that is, that is good. And so you've been there for a couple of weeks now. About three weeks now. Three weeks, three weeks now. And can you walk around? Can you? Of course I can walk okay. around because now I have a heart that works again. Oh my God. That's good news. That's well, Jordan, there's a reason you're still here. Obviously. You and I both yeah, know Yeah, because that. somebody wants me to suffer even more. <laughs> Stop it. So you still have a sense. So that's why I'm still here. You have a sense of humor still, I can see. Yeah. Now, did you think. You have to. You have to. But do you think that, like, um, when you woke up from your coma and realized that Trump didn't win, are you. Did that give you the heart attack or did you have the heart attack before? No, no, no. It doesn't surprise me at all. No. Because you and I both know he won in, in a landslide. That's right. 
Well, you and I both know he won, but I expect the World Communist Party to rip off America big time, which they did. And they put this old communist goofball in, and the people of America just love Marxist, Leninist, Soviet communism. They just love it, and so they want. They want this old communist into power, and I can't wait to see what he's going to do with the people. Yeah, but do you do you think that maybe by chance, maybe one in a million chance, the civil unrest will be when uh, Trump actually convinces the Pennsylvania court to not accept those votes, and all of a sudden he gets back in power? Wouldn't that be the the the, the maybe November surprise? That's right. I thought October was, but now it looks like November, maybe. Yeah, well, I think, do, do you think there's any chance that he might, that Trump might actually still, because he hasn't conceded yet, and I don't trust that, because I think he's working with him as well. So do you think maybe he'll get back into power before January 1st? Or That's 20th? possible, at least possible. Yeah. But if he does, it's going to cause a communist revolution in America. You can see burning of buildings, turning over cars, and riots yeah. that you've never seen before right. in America. And that's what I feel they're doing, because if it would have been a landslide, nobody would fight each other. It had to be Biden is considered the, and they still say he's not president, He's the projected president. They keep saying that. And so I'm waiting for January. I called my mom. I said, Mom, I will, because she wanted Biden. I said, because she hates Trump. I said, Mom, I'll talk to you on January 21st. And let's see if he maintains power. Because we know they have a script. And the script is a hero's journey. They're playing out this hero's journey with Trump. So people are being manipulated to believe he's the hero, right? It's right. Yeah, see, it's 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 but a joke. people don't understand anything about Soviet communism. Nobody mm -hmm. understands what it means. Nobody knows what the word Soviet Soviet means something. But most Americans do not have the brains to know how to pull pee out of a boot, <laughs> so they have no idea what Soviet communism is unless you've studied it for 60 years which most people haven't studied anything for 60 minutes ha, or 60 seconds so what does soviet communism mean soviet means a small group of individuals non-elected that run the government wow that's what the word soviet means a small group of unelected group of people who run the government oh, wow. and that's what we got today we have a soviet union we had the painters union the carpenters union and a soviet union oh my god and so you think the soviet union paid off somebody's paid off but do you feel like trump then is actually for us or against us because now i'm confused do i feel what again well that trump is for or against us because the media hates him and they obviously did voter fraud even if i i didn't like either of them so i can say from somebody that didn't want either to win i can say honestly that it's fraud. It's obvious. He was winning. There's so much voter fraud that it's now coming out that he's even hired lawyers and is suing Pennsylvania and the Supreme Court. If the Supreme Court says that he was correct in the fact that they were wrong in their um, constitution, they would have to call the constitution up to play. And then it comes down to it comes down to Pennsylvania and this lawsuit with the Supreme Court. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter what it comes down to. The World Communist Party is still in control in America, and it controls all the American people, and the people of America love it. They love to wear their mask and crawl on their knees and ask permission and wear their mask and go home and don't talk to anybody and do what they're told. And where was a
America, the land of the free and the home of the brave. That's all gone now. All we do today is go home, keep your mouth shut, stay six foot away from everybody else, and wear your mask, and we hope you die. Yeah. But do you think Trump was for that or against it? Or what do you think that is? Just them causing a distraction? Obviously, he was against it. And that's why they have it. But they you... want to shut him down. So they're shutting America down. Right. Right. Well, they are. And we know this. And, and But do you think there's any chance? The only reason I say this is because if he is playing with them or controlled by someone else, because Biden is not physically the president yet, the only card they have to play which i think would be the november surprise would be it turns around and all of a sudden he gets back into power and that will cause the civil unrest they wanted that was what i was talking about when i said october but i guess it's november now instead of october but what i said started in october yes yes Yes, and when there were still were many October surprises. I mean, like, don't get us wrong. Like, it's there's still a large um, amount of division and contradiction in this uh, the next two weeks. And um, I was just curious if you were voting for Trump or Biden or didn't care because you know that it's the same. Well, I have never actually, a fact, in fact, I have never really voted for anything in my entire life i understand that and why is that it's because i cannot vote for anything i am not here to serve myself i'm here to do a job and my job is not to poke my nose into the business of the earth my job is to wake up the humans on the earth and show them what's really happening to their world so it's not my job to vote for anything. I've come here to be a teacher, and that's what I do. And you have, and you still have, and I'm still getting messages. But so I guess, oh man, my last question is: um, the day that Biden gets for, sort of into power, now the vaccine—they're pushing this vaccine more than anything. Say that again. They are pushing the vaccine now. And now they're going to say it's free, and now it's a 90% effective rate. How do we handle this vaccine? I think the vaccine will ultimately one day kill off all of the bad people called Americans who love freedom and liberty and justice for all. All of those kind of people are going to have to be killed off. We've got too many people living here. Everybody wants to eat. Everybody wants fresh water. Everyone wants a new car. And everyone wants to live well. But we don't have enough resources to feed, clothe, and water, and new cars and homes for people. There are too many people. We've got to do something to get rid of the people. And so this vaccine that they want everybody to take around January or February? What? I think that is going to help a lot. Because it's going to kill off a lot of people. That's why, right? Yes, it's going <laughs> to kill off a lot of people. You've never been a humanitarian. <laughs> You're just like, yeah. but Jordan, they're like, you lived your life. They're going to want me to take it. And I don't wear masks. I'm standing up. I question authority. I'm not a communist. I'm trying to wake people up too. I'm way younger and not as experienced, but I don't want to take that vaccine. And what if they make me take it? Well, so far, so well. What happens if they want to make you take it? Well, either take it or don't. And if you don't take it, you're going to find out who the Democrats really are and what they're really up to. It's just when they arrest you, put you in concentration camps, and force you to crawl on your knees and say yes and do whatever they tell you, at the point of your life, you'll find out who the Democrats actually, in fact, really are. Yep. And they say they, they, say they want to, you know... Give it to the older people first because they'll need it more than anything. So when they That's come. That's right, because the older people are costing the country a lot of money with Social Security and their medical bills. So they are the ones that need it more than anybody. They need to get rid of all these old people. 
So what are they going to do when they come after you? How can I protect you first, and then you can protect me? My God protects me. My oh. spiritual aid protects me. I have cosmic companions. Yeah, you do. You absolutely do. And sometimes those cosmic companions come in the form of a blonde girl taking you from L.A. to Air. To no, you're right. That's exactly <laughs> correct. So I don't care. I just leave it in the hands of someone higher than me to see what's going to happen. I don't know, and I don't care. I leave it to the spirit world. Well, I love that, and that's why I love you, and I've been worried about you. Now I have to call Brandy and tell her you're okay, but what can I do to support you? From, from, and you know I'm back in Sedona, so how can I support you from here? Are you in Sedona? Yeah, I'm back here. I told you I'm at my parents' place. They're back in Michigan, and I'm, yeah, I'm living here now. Well, I'm wondering what, uh, what the Flagstaff looks like and what it's like right now, because I have to come back to Flagstaff and get a few things that I need here. And, uh, and it's all back in Flagstaff, so I have to come back there, all the way back to Flagstaff, well, and pick up some boxes and some papers and some okay. computer parts. Okay, well, why don't we speak tomorrow, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach out to my YouTube family and tell them I spoke to you, and I'm going to see if maybe we can get a little GoFundMe, and then if I can get enough money to come back to L.A., I'll spend two days there, and I can pick you up and bring you back here. How does that sound? That would be wonderful if you could pick me up and take me back to LA. But I've got someone who's going to drive me to Los. That's going to drive me from Los Angeles to Arizona, pick up my stuff, put it in the truck, and drive me back to Los Angeles. And I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that till Monday morning. Monday about noon, I leave here to go back to Los Angeles. Where? Oh, you're in Flagstaff right now? No, I mean going back oh, to Flagstaff. I'm okay. 80 years old. I can't remember where <laughs> I am anymore. I mean, I'm in Los Angeles. Someone's coming to pick me up at 12 noon oh, good. on Monday, and we're going to drive back to Flagstaff and pick up my junk and hopefully get the hell out of there quick. All right, so then you don't need me to, to drive you back. No, I don't think so. I'll have someone to drive me back. All right. Well, I just want you to know that I will, I'm here and I'll do whatever I can for you. And you have my number and what I would like you to do, if you don't mind, because then that will help me not worry, is if you could just call me once a week so I can see where you are and what I can do to help you. And, you know, we'll do That would be nice. That would be nice. I would like that. Yeah, and can you tell me now your phone number? Yeah, I will, I will tell you. My phone number is it, what? 818. Okay. Call you if I need you. Yeah, but also you I got want... my number too. Well, no, I mean, I have it now, but it changes all the time. So I do have your email, and you did respond to that, and that made me happy. Okay. Okay, so Thank I, you for calling. Yeah, and I'm, I want to talk to you and help fund you or do whatever we can to give you more comfort. And you've got a lot of people that love you and are thinking about you. Okay, Jordan? Okay, and thank you. All right. I guess we'll talk later. We will. Okay, good night, my love. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. See, I had a gut feeling. I had a gut feeling that something was going on. I had a gut feeling something happened to him. I messaged my friend. I said, something's going on. I'm, I don't know what it is. I do have some kind of weird intuition. Can't believe he had a heart attack. Went to the hospital. He's, he is divinely protected, you guys. He's not, he's not joking about that. The guy has been through everything. He doesn't want to be here anymore. He even said that. Wow, man, that's powerful. I got to think about this. I'm really, wow, I'm, I'm going to call him back and let him know that I'm going to share this with you guys and um, everything else, my personal conversation with him, how he grew up, what happened to him. That was the most traumatic thing I think I've ever heard. All of that will be on my Patreon. And I know a lot of you guys that are supporting me on Patreon. I want to thank you for that. I've been really busy. I've been trying to um, make a living since I'm not in LA anymore. 
and I am hosting wine tours, VIP wine tours here in Sedona, and um, it's lovely. I'm also divinely guided. Trust me, there's been a few times in the past two weeks that I could have been gone. Let's just say that. So that's where I'm going to leave it at. But I am protected as well. And um, wow, I'm just still kind of thrown that conversation. Um, yeah, once you, uh, if you guys aren't my patrons, um, once you sign up, Rachel Reinstra, Patreon, um, stuff he shared with me, I'm not going to be posting on YouTube for millions of people to see. It's, uh, it's deep, interesting, fascinating, explains a lot, and is very moving. And um, anyone that is a Jordan Maxwell fan, you will understand when you hear it. I just haven't had time in the last week to post on my Patreon. I know that, that made a few people unsubscribe, which is like $5 a month, not a big deal, but I want to be of my word, and I've just been really, really, really busy with a full-time job. But now I have tomorrow off, so I will be uploading my car ride with Jordan, the portion where he talks about his wife, why he didn't have kids, what happened to him very traumatically with his mom. And, um, and yeah, I also I want us to brainstorm how we can help him because he needs, he needs to be loved and cared about. You guys didn't hear this part, but when I called him and I said, you, you have me worried about you, I'm thinking about you, he said, I need someone to worry about me. So, because I know his history and what he's been through, I want us to figure out how we can do that. And yeah, it's great to have your support, but I'm not 80 years old, and it's been 60 years old, 60 years studying the truth and sharing it, and basically sacrificing my life to be a teacher like he did. So I have a roof over my head, I have a job, and I just want us somehow to do what we can to make his life or what's left of it better, right? Give back. Seven times what you give comes back to you. I have experienced that. Oh, wow. All right. I wasn't expecting that. So I guess I'm going to end that right here because I don't know what else to say. That wasn't planned. But that's really not surprising information, but I love that. I love that guy. Spend eight hours in a car with somebody that you've researched and listened to for years and my heart hurts right now. All right. Bye, guys.